Alma Digital. Uh, the fourth session today, we're going to start talking about document delivery, atrium digitization requests, the setup and the workflow. Uh, all of the information, as you've known in the previous sessions, is all available here. Everybody sees my screen. It's all available here. I'm under Alma Training, Extended Training, Presentations and Documents, Digital. And for those of you who are on the call or on the webinar, I can send that out to you now. Uh, so you'll have the link. And others will have this, oops, oh, sorry, let me close all this. Others will have this doing the recording through this path here. So we'll send this out in the chat, and now everybody's got it. Wonderful. Okay, so today, document delivery, patron digitization requests, setup and workflow. I'm gonna download that presentation, and we're only gonna look at three slides from the presentation, and then we're gonna go live. Sorry, I opened that again by accident. There we are. I wanted to open this one, the presentation. So we're gonna answer three, we're gonna answer three important questions through this presentation. Let's try that one more time and open when done. All right, three important questions. What are those three important questions we wanna answer? What is a digitization request? How can the digitization request be applied to the end users? And who can create a digitization request? Those are the three questions we want to answer here. So what is a digitization request? Uh, it's a request that a resource that the library owns, either a physical resource or an electronic resource, but primarily it's done for physical resources, that all or part of it will be digitized and made available to a patron. Uh, and as an example here, it might be an article in a journal, a chapter of a book. It might be an entire book, though usually it's just a chapter. It might be an entire book if it's a small pamphlet uh, or even a flyer. Um, a small publication of some sort, digitized, sent to the user. Uh, sent to the user, that's our second question. How can it be supplied? There's three ways it can be supplied. Even though there's two bullets, there's three ways, because the first bullet is two ways. So it can be supplied as a file or as an attachment. A link to a file or an attachment. That's the first one, document delivery. We're going to see examples of this. So the patron will get an email with, here's a link to your document. They'll click the link and it will download. It will download the file. We'll first off to log in, then it'll download. And we'll also see that in the manage copyright and document deliveries, in the profiles that we specify how many times it can be downloaded because it's not gonna stay there forever. Or it can be an attachment, or it can be deposited into the repository. And if it's deposited into the repository, the patron will also get a link to view it. They'll be viewing it in Primo, and it will be available for everybody, not just for the patron, because it's part of the repository. So that's what is a request, how can it be supplied, and then we have who can create it. So like many requests in Alma, it can be created by the staff or by the patron. If the staff creates it in Alma, he, does it on, he or she does it on behalf of the patron, and it's called the staff-initiated request. Similar situation. With a physical item request, it can be done by the patron in Primo, or it can be done by the end user in, Alma, in Primo. Or it can be done in the Primo interface, and that's patron initiate. Now, uh, just to be fully open, put everything on the table here, 
Uh, what we've got to show today is a lot of configuration, which can be a little boring. And I don't want to do a boring session. So before we get to all of the configuration, I want to make two digitization requests. They're going to behave slightly differently. Then we're going to go look at the configuration and see why did they behave differently. So we'll be able to go look at the configuration, but it won't be very boring because we'll be seeing real digitization requests really happening. No one wants to spend a whole hour just looking at configuration. So we're going to start with two digitization requests. Very high level will do that. We're not going to discuss every tiny detail, but then we're going to look at the configuration, like a reverse engineering kind of thing. First, we're going to do it. Then we're going to see how is it configured. Okay. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone is still with me here. We got 128 people on. Uh, just send that a little chat and say, yes, I hear you. Yes, I see you because I don't want to keep talking and then find out later that nobody heard me. So just say, yes, I hear you. Okay, everyone send it and they hear me. Great, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna use two different patrons and let's go take a look at those patrons. So I'm gonna go into Alma first and let me log in here, let that open up. Okay, Alma's there she is and we log in, all right. Boom. So, and I'm going to keep a little notepad open here so we can refer to this later. So we have two patrons, similar patrons to who we used last time. We have Donald Draper. He is a user group. Distance learner. And we have Alicia. And she is faculty user group. Okay. Now, let's just take a look at them, make sure nothing has changed with them. So we'll say users. Users. Where's users? There we go. Users Donald. Oh, I didn't know I had so many Donalds. Donald. Okay, so Donald Draper is user group distance learner. And Alicia is user group faculty. We're going to see a little difference in behavior among them, and then we're going to see why did that happen. So we're going to Primo. Primo. There we are. And of course, we need to be logged in to make a digitization request like all the other requests we have in them. So we'll say sign in. I'm going to be Donald. Okay. He comes along. He searches for lean out. Okay. Usually when we search for lean something, we search on a lean in for uh, Cheryl Sandberg. Okay, so we're going to take the lean out here by Dawn Foster and go to the availability and make a digitization request. Now, all of these options to do a request or do resource sharing or do a digitization, it's a combination of the terms of use, the rules, and the discovery interface display logic rules. Uh, we're not going to go into all the details of there. It's the same as uh, the other types of requests. So let's click here on digitization. And now we're going to fill it in. So we'll say it's a partial chapter, article title. Uh, we want chapter or our chapter three, we'll say chapter three, leaning sideways, so lean out, lead sideways. Okay, then we've got the author, Sally Smith. 
Okay. Page 23 and page 56. Full chapter and send the digitization request. Okay. Notice we see a copyright here. It's automatically popping up on us. And we're going to say, I agree. Okay. So Donald Draper. He made a request for chapter three, chapter three of Lean Out. Okay. Now, along comes Donald Draper. Excuse me, Alicia Ken. By the way, Donald will see this, of course, in his My Library card. There it is. He sees it's a digitization request in process and by the way something i didn't point out is that this lean out is in the main library okay tell you about main library now another one let's see if we got it here on the screen to use oh library So next we'll use alliances, outsourcing, and the lean organization. So she's going to log in now. I know. And here comes Alicia. Sign in. All right, she's logged in. She's gonna search for the lean organization. That should suffice for us. Okay. And does the search. Goes to the availability. It's also in the main library, important for later that we point that out now. Makes the digitization request. Wants chapter four. How to make the organization. Okay. Author of that is. Start page 56, end page 67, and it's also a full chapter. Send, read the copyright, agree with it, and done. Okay. Both of them have now made a request. Let's now see what's going to happen. And we'll see why it happens. Now, there's a lot of configurations around this, but this is a two, we have two sessions just on these digitization requests, document delivery. So we'll cover it all, not necessarily all today, but we'll cover it all. So let's go take a look what's going to go on now. We come along back into Alma, and these were in the main library. So we're going to switch. I'm going to be a worker at the circulation desk in the main library. Switch main library circulation desk. And both of these items were available. Therefore, they're going to be in the pick from shelf list. If they were on loan, they wouldn't yet be in the pick from shelf list. There would be a pop up when the item returned stating this item has a request, et cetera, et cetera. So these are going to be in the pick from shelf list. Fulfillment pick from shelf. Okay, someone asked, by the way, how we change the pickup location. Uh, it's, by, it's by the circulation desk. The pickup location is according to the circulation desk. 
Here, when choosing the location, you see the locations for which you are an operator. I'm an operator in all of the locations. And then let me close this. Sorry about that. And then you just choose the one you want. So this is main circulation desk. So this is now for the main library. So we're at the pick from shelf in the main library. And now I would typically print slips for these. I could select them all and say print slip report, print one at a time. Somebody gets the slip, goes to the shelf, gets it, and brings it to the circulation desk. And now we're going to scan them in. When we scan them in, they're going to go to the digitization department, which we're going to look at in a moment. So we scan these in. Fulfillment scan in items. By the way, I'm just going to say here that for here we did the lean organization. Now, normally I would have the item in front of me and I would scan it in. I would have the barcode with me. I don't have the item with me. So I'm going to search here for it. Close this so I don't get, okay. All right, so I take this, I scan it in. Okay. So I scanned it in. It says Destination Institutional Digitization Department. So it's on its way now to the Digitization Department. We'll also scan in Lean Out. Again, I don't have the barcode, so I'll click from the pickup list. I'll search for lean out the title. We'll select it. And OK. So now, uh, lean out has also been scanned in. It says destination, the institution uh, digitization department. If somebody were to come and search for this, of course, would say that it's in transit to the institutional in, uh, digitization department. If somebody were to search for this in Primo, either of them, it's not available. Previously, it said available. Now it's not available because it's in the process of being uh, sent to the digitization department. Okay, so now we're gonna be a patron, a, an employee, a staff user who is at the digitization department. There's no need for one employee to constantly change here. And by the way, it's also possible to do all of the digitization in the circulation desk and not switch around. So I'm going to switch now to the digitization department. I'm going to be an employee who's in the digitization department. So here we have institutional digitization department. Now, two things. First of all, I'm going to need to approve these. I'm going to say here, because later we're going to say why, need to approve both. Okay, approve both. What does that mean? At the digitization department under fulfillment, there's an approval requests list. And I'll say here, for example, that for the first one, I will work on and approve. And I can add a copyright clearance number. I can upload a file of the copyright, approve it and send in the reason why it's being approved, submit. And the next one also, uh, approval or request lists. I'll work on this one. And I don't have to fill in the copyright clearance. I will approve this and submit this. 
So now they've both been approved. Now I need to actually work on them. Just give them to someone and say, hey, can you scan this? Can you do this, et cetera, et cetera. So I gotta scan them in first. I sent them from the main library. I sent them to the digitization department. Here in the digitization department, they arrive. And now we scan them in here. Like all of the processes, um, the binding, the all the work orders comes from one desk, gets scanned in to another desk. Uh, and we scan in the lean out. And we scan in the lean organization. Okay. And and it in. I don't have the barcode with me. Normally, I'd have the actual physical item in my hand, and I would just scan it in. Now they're both scanned in. Now they're both scanned in. Now we're going to handle them in the manage in process item. So, if we say fulfillment, manage and process items will go there. And as you see here, after scanning it in, I can go directly there. Let's say it's the next day now. They were scanned in yesterday. Fulfillment, manage and process items. So, I see here exactly what needs to be scanned. Chapter four, how to make the organization lean by Sharona Smith, start page, end page. Same thing here. Uh, I get it scanned, there's a file. I gave it to some staff member who did the actual scanning. Now I'm ready to work on it. Now I have a, just a sample file called PDF. And that's what we'll use, but of course normally it would be the actual scan of the article. So here we'll say next step, because now I'm ready for the next step. It's already been scanned. Attach documents, add the attachment. Now we're going to choose the actual file, which we're going to attach to it. There it is. Did I click it? Yes, I did. And add attachment. I've added it and I'll say done. When I say done, it also automatically goes back to being in place. Now we'll do the same thing on the next one, the lean out. Next step. And attach the documents. Add attachment. Choose it. A PDF file. Add attachment. And done. Now, both of these items are already considered. Once I click done, they're already considered back in place, as you see here. And here, let's take a look. Same thing here. It will be available. There it is, available. Okay, now how are those patrons getting the items? Getting the, the document to be more, more exact. How is the document getting delivered? So let's go to the email of these patrons, just by chance I have here. And let's see. Not, not, notification item letter. Okay. Let's take the most recent. And here we go. Zero minutes ago. So Donald Draper, lean out. He got an actual attachment. Attachment was sent to him. I'm going to click it. I am a PDF file. This is my sample PDF. He got an actual attachment. So I'm going to say here, Donald Draper, he got an attachment. However, the patron before him, 
going to scroll up. This is from zero minutes ago. This one here, one minute ago, Alicia, she's got a link. Your request to create a digital version has been completed. Here's the title to download the resource. And then there's three different um, login options, depending on what the institution uses for authentication. For local LDAP users, click here. I'm clicking here. I'm logging in. It says download completed successfully and you can see here it downloaded now this is also dependent on your browser how the browser works uh, you can define your browser to first ask you and then choose you where to save it can do whatever so it's browser but it downloaded so now i open it and i've got my sample pdf okay so now we've got both uh digitization requests completed and this one got an attachment this one got a link i'm going to do one more i'm going to do one now it's already half we're already halfway over these meetings i'm glad i made this two times there's two sessions just for this document delivery lot to talk about again i didn't want to make it boring and just jump right into the configuration now i'm going to make one more then we're going to jump into the configuration see how did that happen the next one will be a staff initiated so here inside alma i will search for two oh well, let's search for shuguan very science. Probably thought I made a spelling mistake when I said shoe one. Okay, so now we're going to make a staff initiated request for this journal issue, which is Tu Shu Guan Zhi Kun Zhu Zhu, Journal of Library and Information Science, Volume 21, Issue 2, October 1995. For, oh, this is already in a work order, so we don't want to play with that one. We'll choose something else. Take something already available. We've got plenty of valuable here. Okay, we'll take this one right here. Library and information science, four-week loan, everything's good. Item in, oh, also not in place. Here's one item in place, great. So this one here. Library and Information Science, number 20 to 23, 1982 to 85. And there's an article in here. We want to make a digitization request. So, request, staff digitization request. Managing department is the institutional digitization department that we've been playing around with so far. And what do we want here? Uh, oh, I didn't copy the whole thing. Fine. We'll leave all that blank. And the material type is an issue. And that should be enough for us. Submit. Staff digitization request. Oh, partial digitization, I want to say. That's why I was missing. So I want one article. The article is Library Science for Beginners. Required pages from 34 to. All right. Everything's good. Submit. All right, now, if we're at the main library, circulation desk, where's my main library circulation desk? Right here. 
And we come to the pick from shelf list. We see it. We scan it in. Fulfillment scan in items. And this time I was fortunate enough to copy the barcode. We scan it in. And now it's on its way, destination institutional digitization department. So we have staff initiated Journal of Library Science. Okay. Sorry about that. Wrong icon. All right. Now. Uh, full, we switch to the digitization department to handle it. And here, we're going to scan it in. It was sent there, arrives one day in the mail, and someone gets it and said, oh, let me scan that in and see what's going on. So they see it. Here it is. Now, just to show, we're going to approve it. Work on, approve. And now we have manage the in process items. Here it is. Next step, important. In both of the previous cases, it said add, a, add document. We attached a PDF file, and that was sent to somebody. Here, and we're not adding an attachment. We're adding digital inventory. It's not something sent to a patron with five or however many options to download, or a file that he has as an attachment. We're adding actual digital inventory into Alma. That's a big difference. So here it's automatically going to a collection called the Central Digitized Collection. Library and Information Science is going to a collection. Library and Information Science is going to a collection called Central Digitized Collection. So this is staff initiated. It's going to a collection. All right. Now, here we're going to upload a file. Before we had to attach one, if you remember. Now we have a representation. Everybody remembers from previous sessions that we had title level collections and we had representations inside. That's what we've got here, saved. We've added this to Alma. This is part of Alma now. It's in that collection. It actually becomes part of the inventory. If now I were to search for all titles that Library and Information Science, Library and Information Science. Use my bad spelling. Okay. If I got a million of them, I'll just go right to the collection. And ours will be here with both the physical and the digital. But also here, that, this. Great. Library and information science, I've got the physical and the digital. And it was added to the collection. The collection was, the, was from the first seminar, uh, webinar was added to the central digitized collection. It's part of Alma now. Someone can come and view this automatically. Little 
such an integral part now of Alma, not only for the person who saw it, but for anybody. And here it is, a simple PDF file. And the patron here also gets an email here, inbox. And this is directly to it, your request to create the digital version. This is to the, to the staff user with a link to it. And it just goes right to Primo. It's, it's part of uh, the discovery. It's part of the institution's repository. They get the copyright statement, close, and then they view it. OK. So that's the three examples. Now let's go see what happened and why. And we're just going to update our document here that this went here right to a collection and became inventory. OK, so now let's start looking at the configuration, see what's going on. The first thing we need is a digitization department. All of this is in the PowerPoint, but again, I don't want to be boring and just go slide, slide, slide. So digitization department. How do we get to the digitization department? We go configuration, digital fulfillment, Digitization department, I'm going to configuration, fulfillment, digital fulfillment, digitization department. There has to be a digitization department. The digitization department might deal with the entire uh, institution, as is our case, or it might deal with one specific library in the institution. So if we take a look here, edit, uh, we've got two work days. That means when it goes to the department, we expect it to be there two days, meaning the due back date is two days later. In the served libraries, we see here that it's for the entire institution. My institution is called Alma University, but I could theoretically remove this and make one for a specific library. The operators are the people who can go to or use or be located at this digitization department. So that's the digitization department. Um, we, I said also it's possible to do all of the work at the circulation desk if it's the same staff who are doing regular circulation desk activities such as loan, return, hold shelf are also doing the digitization requests, then there's no need to switch back and forth and it can all be handled at the circulation desk. And there's even a place that we're going to log back in here. There's even a place to specify that it's handled by the circulation desk. It's all together. So when we say fulfillment, digitization departments, it's possible also that this would be managed by the circulation desk. I see a question or two popped up. Someone asked the digitization department is not the reserve desk. That's correct. The digitization department is not the reserve desk. The digitization department is a place where the digitization occurs, where there's the scanner, where there's the staff who scan it. They make it a PDF file. They check that there's copyrights. It might be the same staff sitting at the circulation desk, but it's its own entity. Someone asked, does the staff initiated request that goes to a collection example mean that the customer is an Alma digital customer? Uh, it means that it's an institution that uses Alma digital because they're depositing digital inventory into the institution 
Therefore, they use Alma Digital. Uh, then we've got, is the workflow pick from shelf, approve, work on the digitization request? Uh, excellent question. I'm going to put this here. I think we might have needed three sessions the way this is going. Because we haven't even gotten to the, <laughs> to the uh, configuration. It can be this. Um, I'm not going to say the person's name because I keep all of the questions anonymous so that no one will ever be afraid to ask. No one's name will ever be given. You can ask anything you want. You can also say anything you want. No one will ever know who you are, except for me. Well, unless you sign in as a different person. So I'm just going to jump ahead. This could be, but not necessarily. You can say that you can't, you can't work on it until you approve, or you can say you can work on them simultaneously. And that's really one of the, one of the many, excuse me for saying, wonderful things people thought of when they designed Alma. Because inside the digitization and copyright rules, which we're going to look at in a moment, we have an option here to say, we have approval, and it says, do you work on the approval in parallel to the digitization workflow? And I have checked in parallel. That means it doesn't matter what order I do them in. I could first work on it and then approve it, or I can approve it and then work on it. And in fact, I can even approve it when not being in the digitization department yet. Uh, but let's save that for later. And it's a little complicated, perhaps what I said. I don't want to get misunderstood. But it depends on, in short, it depends on what's checked here. Okay, let's go on. Uh, when the shelf status, will the shelf status follow the time to shelf setting at the item's home circulation desk? Uh, the time, if you're referring to the time, it's expected to be back at the circulation desk or at its home library. That's defined inside the digitization department, digitization department under work days work time okay let's go on here interesting i said to myself you know what an hour is never enough i can make it an hour and a half or i'll make it two days two sessions which is two hours i said ah then I'm, then we're surely covered maximum we'll finish a little early we're not going to finish early next time okay so now let's continue seeing what happens all right, so in addition to that, we have these electronic document delivery rules who say before we even start defining anything, which user groups are allowed to take part in this? Which user groups can make a digitization request? Before we even get to terms of use, which is a whole nother thing, and the copyright rules that we're going to look at, uh, so here, for example, if I were to say add rule and add a parameter, I could say, for example, if the inventory owner, in other words, if it's main library, then don't allow digitization requests, but if it's medical library, allow it. Or what I've got here in my example, I say, if it's user group guest, then it's not allowed. So everybody except for user group guests can do it. Because I said here, user group guest is not allowed. Then I have the default here, and the default says true. So first it says if the user group is guest, it's not allowed. And otherwise, it is allowed. Then, of course, like everything else, we have. Fulfillment unit rules. All of what we did today was in the main library. The main library is in this fulfillment unit called regular location circulating material. And I know that because here, if I say main library, then the main library general location, I'll say main, main, main library 
general location. Let me just go in here and here. Here. So many almas. So many almas, so little time. Terms up, oh, not terms of use. Sorry about that. We're going to look at the terms of use in a second. Fulfillment units. Here it is. Okay. So what we've been looking at is the main library general location and main library. Here it is. Main library general location is part of this fulfillment unit. Inside the fulfillment unit rules, we have rules for type request. And I've made things very simple here. I have one rule, a default request rule. The default request rule uses the default terms of use. The default terms of use has that it's requestable and it's digitizable. Inside the terms of use, which is used by a fulfillment unit rule, we define here. I'm going to go all the way back in to find out inside the terms of use of type request there is a parameter to say if something is digitizable or not so we have the user group we have the rule that uses the terms of, of use and that's why those patrons that we used as our examples were able to do a digitization request Okay, I saw another question came in. Uh, I just saw a terms of use for remote storage. Is this needed when setting up remote storage for digital representations? If the item is in remote storage and you want people to be able to make a digitization request on that item, then you would need to make the rule in the fulfillment unit that includes the items in remote storage. Okay, uh, let's go on. Uh, okay, now we also have back here. Someone asked another one. Someone asked, when I try to toggle to manage by circulation desk, it will not let me. Why would this be? I have administrator rights. Okay, this digitization department, this managed by circulation desk is not a toggle, but rather an indicator. Perhaps it's not the best icon, but it's not a toggle one. If the circulation desk will handle the digitization, then inside the circulation desk, you see, we could talk for hours hours we could talk if i were to go to the circulation desk i went to main library fulfillment circulation desk and choose a circulation desk we can indicate here that it supports digitization then that digitization department would say would say uh managed by circulation desk or whatever it said there then you wouldn't have to switch uh, the location every time. So if it's checked here, then in the digitization department, it would be indicated that it's handled by the circulation desk. It's 1751 already. I feel like we hardly covered anything. We've got nine minutes left. Can we start it on time? All right, so let's continue, but we get a whole nother hour next time. Uh, I see people have joined since then too. We've got 134 people with us. Okay, let's continue. So now the next point, and that's now we're gonna see why what happened happened. So we're gonna look now at the actual rules. So I'm, I'm configuring on the level of Alma University, which is the institution, and we're going to copyright management digitization and copyright rules let's see what we've got so the first user we had was user group faculty 
if we look at this rule here, what does it say? If the user group is not distance learner, so that's everyone except for Donald. Donald was a distance learner. Alicia was faculty. So Alicia is included in here. Alicia uh, made a patron digitization request in Primo. These are the parameters. You can add a parameter to make a rule. It can be all kinds of different parameters. And our parameters are user group is not distance learner, request type is patron digitization. And when that happens, the digitization target is document delivery link. If you recall, and we have proof here, she got a link. She didn't get an attachment, she got a link. And the reason she got the link is because it's document delivery link. These are the options we can have, either an attachment, a link, or actual digital inventory. And we saw all three of those happen. So that's why when Alicia did a patron digitization request, she got the link. Now, let's continue. And let's see another rule. Now we've got digitization and copyright rules. Let's take a look at this one here. This one says, if the user group equals distance learner, distance learner, you may recall, that's Donald. And then we scroll down here. Uh, we get document delivery attachment. So now there's attachment. Then, that's why Donald got the attachment. Also, this is why on both of them we had to do approval, because we said it requires approval. And it requires copyright clearance. The user had to click that they saw the copyright and they agreed to it. And the in parallel is what we talked about before. You can start working on one before the other, et cetera. Okay, then we have still one more. We'll close this. And again, digitization and copyright rules. Staff digitization, digital inventory representation. What happened here? Edit. Uh, here, we said if the request is staff digitization, then it's not going to a link, it's not going to an attachment, it's going to become digital inventory. The digitization target is going to be digital inventory representation. And when the digital inventory representation is chosen, then inside this workflow, you choose which collection is it going to. And here we said it's going to the central digitized collection. The usage type is master. And last week, we talked about access rights and policies. If you recall, we also define here which access right it automatically gets. So if we were to come now into the collections, resources, manage collections, it's all coming full circle now. We talked about these collections in the first of our five webinars. And we have a collection here, which is called the Central Digitized Collection. This is where all of the staff initiated digital deposits go. So here in the title list, one of these will be the library science that we did today. Here it is, library and information science. So this is what we attach today. If we go look at these representations, 
Here it is. There's my PDF file. I'm going to edit this. It has an access right of five concurrent users. If you recall, we said the article was called Library Science for Beginners from this chapter to this chapter. And in the file list, we have the file which we uploaded, which just was a very simple APDF file. The five concurrent users and the access rights, the collection, uh, everything came directly from the rules that we saw a moment ago. Again, if we go look at that rule, then I'm going to look at the latest question that came in. Then I see we're already out of time. Digitization and copyright rules. Again, the collection it went to a central digitized collection, the default access rights. And somebody just asked. Does the two does the link expire? The link eventually it's going to expire. I, I can't say it never expires. Like I can't ever say something has no limit. Uh, however, when there's a link for one of these rules, there's a limit as to how many times the user can click it. Let's see here if we go, for example, to the one with the link. Link not distance learner. It says maximum views so after it's viewed five times it's no longer going to work and plus remember the only person who has that link is the person who got the email but if she tries to share it with her friends after five links it's not going to work anyway and another one here is it possible to save digitized file outside of alma and send the link via Alma to the patron. Well, that's what we did in the first in the first two cases. I have in my own on my own PC that file that we've been playing around with is called APDF file. This here, it's not in Alma. This APDF file is not in Alma. It's just a very simple PDF file like this. It's not part of Alma at all. And Donald Draper, who is the faculty, uh, I, excuse me, the not the distance learner user group, he made the request. He got this file uh, as an attachment, and the file is not in Alma. So you ask, is it possible to save the digital digitized file outside of Alma? Yes, like this one here, and send the link via Alma to the patron. Yes, that is what happened here when Donald Draper got the attachment. Donald Draper should still be here, uh, wherever he is. Yes, right here. See, he got the attachment. So yes, it's possible. OK, and I see it's 18 o'clock local time. So we've got a whole nother hour. We, we got through a decent amount, definitely not the whole thing. But that's why we made this a two-part two session. So we'll see you all next week, and thanks, everyone, for joining. Bye-bye.